Hello and welcome. I'm Diane Baden, a member of the ELECTS Continuing Education Committee. We are pleased to present this webinar on the LC classification P schedule. Our presenter is Elaine Franco. Elaine has been principal cataloger for monographs at the University of California, Davis since 1990 and served in a similar position at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where she began her career over 30 years ago. In her capacity as principal cataloger, Elaine has served as a resource person for interpreting cataloging rules, training new catalogers, and maintaining quality control. She has used each of the LC classification schedules at some point, specializing in the humanities. Elaine will pause at key points in the presentation to respond to questions. Please type your questions into the question box on your screen as they occur to you. Elaine will try to respond to as many questions as possible. The Elect CE Committee invites you to use the Twitter back channel, hash Elect CE, to interact with other participants during or after this webinar. However, please submit your questions for the presenter in the question box on the screen. We will not monitor Twitter during the presentation. Please note that we are recording the presentation and you will receive an email shortly after the conclusion of the webinar with a copy of the slides and the link to the recording. And now I will turn the program over to Elaine. There will be a slight pause as we change presenters. Okay, uh, I'm Elaine Franco. Uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar. We will discuss several of the more complex aspects of, use, of creating call numbers using the Library of Congress P schedule, including the use of various tables with a focus on individual American literary authors. At the end of the presentation, attendees will be able to create classification numbers for individual literary authors, to identify and use appropriate internal tables to shelf list an author's collections, individual works, and criticism, and to apply external tables from CSM, the Classification and Shelf Listing Manual, to shelf list translations and criticism of individual literary works. This is a brief outline of this session. Examples will be drawn from my own cataloging, from Library of Congress bibliographic records, and from OCLC member bibliographic records in that order of pre precedence, preference or precedence. The LCP schedule is comprised of a number of subclasses that include general language and literature, as well as the languages and literatures, ancient and modern, that have existed throughout the world. This listing that you see on the screen corresponds to the separate printed volumes of the P subclasses. Note that the language and literature tables numbered P through PZ 1 through 50, which have been revised and standardized to apply across all of the subclasses, are printed in a separate volume. I will refer to them as internal tables, although they're 
they may be in a separate volume, since they are specific to the P schedule. The schedules and tables, as well as LC policy and practice, have been revised over the years. Be aware that you may encounter obsolete patterns as you search the LC catalog. When constructing classification numbers for individual authors and or separate literary works, the cataloger will almost always need to apply one or more tables. The internal tables, numbered P through PZ1 through 50, should be applied first. Note that there are a few exceptional authors, such as Shakespeare, who have their own tables. This is not a problem because this will be obvious in the schedules, and um, the tables will apply very specifically. Sometimes, more than one interval internal table will be needed. For example, one to establish an author classification number, the other to accommodate a specific literary work written by that author. Let's look at some of the ex what I will call the external tables. Various tables in CSM, this is the LC classification and shelf listing manual, may be applied as needed. And in literature, you'll you may particularly uh, be using uh, G, section G63, which is the cutter table, G140, uh, which gives guidance on adding dates to call numbers, G150, translation table, and G65, preferred shelf list order for individual authors. Note that G65 refers to all kinds of authors, not just literary authors. And you should apply it and also the translation table only when the appropriate table in P to P Z will not suffice. The uh, table P to P Z 40 is probably the most familiar uh, to catalogers of literary works, and it is used for individual literary authors of the 20th and 21st centuries. When working with earlier authors, be aware that there are other tables that may be required. Uh, the example we're looking at is the American author Mark Twain, and uh, we would apply table P through PZ31 for uh, creating classification numbers relating to Twain. Now, if we look in the schedules, we will find Mark Twain under American Literature, Individual Authors, 19th Century. Uh, we it listed in the schedule will be a range of numbers, PS 1300 to 1348 for Samuel Clemens or Mark Twain. We will also see the instruction table P to PZ31 modified. Now, in the printed tables and in classification web, if you use it, uh, you will be guided to the appropriate table that should be used with that particular author. OK, this, this is. Uh, slide represents some excerpts from table P to PZ31. Mark Twain has been assigned 49 numbers. Note it's PS 1300 through 1348, and 1300, of course, is the first number, so it is 49 rather than 48 numbers. Um, this is the table for authors with 49 numbers. So collected works of Twain would go under PS 1300, uh, selections 1303, separate works by title 1305 through 1322, and then uh, goes on for general biography, more specific biographical subjects. And the table continues through number 48 and includes under criticism and, and interpretation 
um, treatment and knowledge of specific subjects A through Z. So um, you can get very specific if you have an author with such a range of numbers. Okay, Let, this is an example of an actual book about Mark Twain. The author is David Antonucci. The title is Ferris Picture, Mark Twain at Lake Tahoe. Now this, this is an actual book that I cataloged originally. And the first subject heading I gave it was Mark Twain, Homes and Haunts, uh, Lake Tahoe region. Looking back at table P to PZ31, looking down there for biography, general works, and then the more specific things, we see that number 34 corresponds to my subject heading very neatly. Uh, this level of specificity will not be found in all the author tables, but in this case it is just a pleasant surprise that they match up so well. Okay, let's go back and look again at how I uh, created my call number. I found number 34, Homes and Haunts, from the table P to PC31. I knew that Mark Twain's range of numbers was PS 1300 through 1348. So Holmes and Haunts would be PS 1334. I then add a cutter for my main entry. It's David and Antonucci. So I chose A68. Then I added 2011 for the publication date. And my complete call number is PS 1334.A68-2011. Are there any questions at this point? I don't see anyone typing in questions yet. Okay. We'll give you I one minute. I, <laughs> or I hope that one will later. I'll go on. Good. All right. Thank you. Okay. So internal tables. Back to them again. Sometimes, remember, this is a, a repeat slide, sometimes more than one internal table will be needed, one to establish an author classification number, the other to accommodate a specific literary work written by that author. And in the case of Mark Twain, we do have to use a second table. Now, looking at... Um, table P through PZ31 again, let's consider classifying a separate work written by Mark Twain. So we know that separate works are going to be in the range uh, 1305 through 1322, uh, arranged by title alphabetically. Now notice that there is an instruction to subarrange each title, that's each title of each separate work, by table P through PZ41 or P through PZ43. So we have to consult another table and we're given a choice. So which one do we choose? Well, it ha so happens that uh, in the schedules you are instructed that Mark Twain uses table P to three through PZ31 modified. The modification for Mark Twain includes the assignment of separate numbers for each of his works, as well as the instruction to use table P through PZ41 for each of those separate literary works. If you're using classification web, the modified portions of table P through PZ31 will appear highlighted in yellow. So we've used P through PZ31 modified to, to find Mark Twain's author number. We'll pick up uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. That will have its own separate number, PS1305. And then 
uh, we will go to another table, P through PZ41, as we're working on the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Okay, here we are again. This just is a recap. We know we have a separate number for the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And now we're going to subarrange by another table. Okay, in table P through PZ41, this is the table for separate works having their own number. So it says separate works, one number. The zero represents a whole number, the classification number for the separate work to which various cutter numbers may be added following a decimal point. In this case, it is disconcerting that the number for the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, PS1305, is represented by a zero and not by a five if you look in the printed table. Now this is a little bit confusing, but in the enhanced browser view and classification web, uh, the arrangement is much improved and it will show you exactly how the uh, 1305 number uh, will be constructed with additional cutter numbers. Note that in this webinar we are deconstructing classification numbers in order to understand how they have been put together. But once you understand how to build call numbers from tables, I encourage you to learn how to use classification web to assist you if you have access to it. For myself, I set classification web uh, in the enhanced browser view and I let I let I let the computer do most of my computation. But this is the process. You you'd have PS1305 as that basic number for Huckleberry Finn, and then uh, if you had a particular edition of the work, you would cut her A1 and add the date. Uh, if you had selections, that is selections from Huckleberry Finn itself, you'd have PS 1305.A3. Then there are, are special numbers for translations from various languages, and then finally, Criticism is PS 1305A7 through Z, and that cutter A7 through Z would be uh, cuttering for the main entry of the particular uh, critical work. Now here are, are some examples of books about the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and I took these examples from the Library of Congress catalog. Uh, there's a couple of things to point out here. Notice that both critics have the same surname, Norton. So we have Aloysius Norton and Charles Norton. So Elsie chose N6 for the first Norton. And then for Charles Norton, they extended the cutter number to N615 so that it would file alphabetically close to Aloysius Norton. Note also that the first example, uh, in the first example, the call number does not have the 1966 publication date added at the end. And that is an example of older practice. Uh, Library of Congress did not always add uh, publication dates to call numbers. Are there any questions on what we've seen so far? We do have one question. When in PZ31 would you use 0.E to E99, original editions and reprints, versus 5 to 22 separate works by title? 
Okay, just a sec. Uh, could could you? I'm going to look, and I've got the. Uh, do you want me to read it again? Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the full table because I just have excerpts here. When in PZ31 would you use zero point E to point E99? Oh, okay, okay. Versus five to twenty-two. Saying. I know what you're saying. Actually, I skipped over that because it is confusing. Um, what you're seeing there is real confusing. Uh, I did kind of abbreviate saying zero in the table of, for authors of 49 numbers stands for collected works. So that uh, collected works of Mark Twain would be PS 1300. The zero point A, point B, point C, point D, point E, point F, point G, those cutters stand for centuries and years. Uh, be, this goes is this is a, a you know uh, goes back to a practice when Library of Congress did not add dates to first editions and. Um, what happens when you're using this table is you're actually incorporating your date into your call number. So if I had an edition of the complete works of Mark Twain published in 1910, my call number would be PS1300.F10. Now that's going to look really funny, and what happens in this situation is that you may end up with a cutter that ends in zero. And the usual um, rule of thumb for LC cutters is that we try not to end them in zero. So this is an exception. Uh, it also happens that complete editions of works tend to be published uh, at century points or millennium points so that if you had the complete works of Mark Twain published in the year 2000 you would have PS 1300 G00 which looks very funny <laughs> but the the G stands for the century 20, and then the 00, zero stands for the remaining last two digits. So if we had something published, uh, of the complete works of Mark Twain published in 2012, we'd have PS 1300 point G12. Does that answer the question? I hope so. It does. Your uh, questioner has said thanks. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions? Uh, otherwise, we'll move on. OK. We're looking here at some excerpts from uh, P through PZ40, which I said is probably uh, the table that most of you are most familiar with uh, in regard to literary works because it is applied to contemporary authors. Um, the X here, the point X, uh, is, a, is a placeholder representing the author's basic classification number, which will include a cutter number second cutter numbers for selections A6, separate works A61 through Z458, uh, general works of biography and criticism, 
second cutter Z5 through Z999, etc. may be added. Note uh, that in this table, the accommodation for translations, second cutter A199 through A59, does not apply to translations of separate works. Uh, it's only apply to collected or selected translations of collected or selected editions of the author's works. So it's not something uh, you'd use for uh, a, a particular translation of a particular title. Uh, and using P through PZ40, you'll be very familiar with the point A6, and obviously the, the cutter for separate works by title, and probably you'll use the general works biography and criticism quite a bit. So remember that. Remember the second cutter Z5 to Z999, because we'll be looking at that in depth. OK. Now I have an example of a 20th century author, Amy Tan, who, uh, for whom we will be applying table P through PZ40. So we're going to look for her uh, author number. And we know she's uh, a prolific author, and we're sure that Library of Congress has cataloged her works. So we look in uh, the P schedule under American Literature, Individual Authors, 1961 through 2000. Now that date range, of course, refers to uh, the time when the particular author started publishing, not when they were born. OK, and then we find PS 3570 point A to Z, which is PS 3570 is the number for authors with surnames beginning with T. And note here that we are instructed that the author number, which will be that first cutter, is determined by the second letter of the name. And this is very common for 20th century authors. Listed in the schedule, we find PS 3570.A49, Tan Teresa. And this is the first author listed under PS 3570, the number for authors with surnames beginning with T in the LC classification schedule. Now we know that Amy Tan uh, should file alphabetically before Teresa Tan. So what do we do? Well, not all author numbers assigned by LC are included in the classification schedule. In fact, many contemporary authors, even prolific authors, will not be listed. So we look for the author number that LC has assigned to Amy Tan by searching the LC catalog. I could search by author by Amy Tan, or I could browse by call number, because I know approximately where to start with Teresa Tan, PS 3570.849. And if I'm browsed by call number, I do find right above Teresa Tan the call number for Amy Tan, which is PS 3570.A48. Uh, while I'm in there looking around and browsing, I look at separate works by Amy Tan, arranged by title. And I discover that the Joy Luck Club has a title number assigned by Library of Congress. And it is PS 3570.A48, all that being the author number for Amy Tan. And then a second cutter, J6. 
So this is working from table P through PZ40, cuttering A61 through Z458 for separate works by title. But we'll remember that J6, but first we'll look at some uh, general criticism of Amy Tan. The um, cutter number Z5 through Z999 is confusing until you understand what's happening. That second cutter uh, represents the main entry of the usually a, a personal name for a critic who is writing about your particular author. So it's a range of numbers. Uh, think of it, think of them as decimal numbers. The, the smallest one is Z5, the largest is Z999. Library of Congress happens to have this little cheat sheet. It's a shelf listers table. And it divides up that range of numbers to show where you might um, place a particular work with the main entry of A to F, etc. Now, this is this I did pull from um, the workshop Fundamentals of LC Classification. And I'm quoting here, uh, it is only a guide, and any existing alphabetical arrangement takes precedence. So you, you can use it as a guide, but you will find in looking uh, in the LC catalog that these Z second cutters very often will be adjusted so that um, your particular titles will be arranged alphabetically by main entry. It's perhaps easier to understand this if we look at specific examples. OK, back to Amy Tan. We know that uh, biography and criticism general works will be represented by a second cutter, Z5 through Z999. So we have an example of a book about Amy Tan written by Bella Adams. OK, Adams, uh, main entry beginning with A. So what LC assigned to that particular book was a call number of PZ3570.848. OK, that's all for Amy Tan. And then second cutter Z. 515. Uh, not just Z5, because that's the very beginning of the, of the range, but very close to it with Adams. The second example, uh, another critical work, main entry is Kramer. So we have the basic call number for Amy Tan, second cutter Z76 for Kramer. And note that the cutter for Kramer here does not follow the shelf listers table exactly. And that is because there are many critical works about Amy Tan in the LC catalog. So uh, the cutters had to be adjusted. And then my last example is another critical work. And the uh, authors surname begins with Z. So this uh, second cutter will come close to the end of Z999. So Elsie chose Z96 for a main entry uh, with a uh, surname of Z. Does that make sense? Are there any questions there? Uh, not yet. Well, Why there you go good. on. <laughs> That's, that's one of the trickier parts. OK, let's go back to the Joy Luck Club. We know that uh, Library of Congress has assigned 
a specific title number to the Joy Luck Club. Again, it's PS 3570.A48 being the, the author number for Amy Tan, and then second cutter for a separate title, and J6 represents the Joy Luck Club. So now we are going to apply external tables to this classification number for separate literary work because we there is we are not um, instructed as we were with Mark Twain to go to another specific PZ table for a separate work. So now I'm going to apply CSMG 65, the Classification and Shelf Listing Manual, Section G65, which is preferred shelf list order, individual authors, separate works, criticism. And the instructions here are that the cutter for the original work's title is expanded by three or by 3 through 39 and date. Now LC will typically use the 3 through 39 range and this allows for alphabetical arrangement by main entry. And again this is clearer if we look at actual examples. Okay, that first example is a book by Carla Beard about Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. So we have the call number, basic call number for Amy Tan. Then second cutter begins J6, which is the specific cutter for Joy Luck Club. We add a 3 to indicate criticism. And then that second 3 is added to indicate the main entry beard. The second example by John Henriksen, uh, we'll, we will want that to file alphabetically after beard. So notice that LC has added for the second cutter we start with J6 for Joy Luck Club, again a 3 indicating criticism, and then the last digit 4 so that it will file after Beard. The last example is actually a title main entry for a collection of critical essays. So we will cut her by title, which begins women's. Note there, we have a second cutter of J6 for Joy Luck Club, extended by a 3 to indicate criticism, and then an 8 to correspond to the W in the main entry. Now this is very simplified because I've, I've, I obviously don't have all of the critical works on the Joy Luck Club that appear in the LC catalog. Suppose we had another book by uh, someone, well, suppose I wrote something on the Joy Luck Club, and my surname begins with an F, I would want it to file between Beard and Hendrickson. So we have J633 and J634. I would have to extend the J633 cutter, and I might, I'd probably want to put it somewhere towards the middle, so I might, between Beard and Henriksen, so I might end up with J6335. And as you can see, that second cutter can get pretty long, depending on how much is written about an individual title. Okay, another external table that is frequently applied to literary works will be the translation table. Uh, this uh, also appears in uh, the classification and shelf listing manual 
and again, it is a guide. Obviously, it does not include every possible language that uh, could appear in translation. Now, these are some actual examples of translated works of the Joy Luck Club. Notice we have one uh, that's translated into Romanian. So Romanian is not one of the languages in the table, in the translation table. So the, uh, this is actually a, an OCLC member library, and they adjusted the cutter to fit between what is in the table, and that would be between X16 for Italian and X17 for Russian. Now you'd want Romanian to be closer to Russian than Italian, so they um, extended the cutter to J6169. So that will file just before J6167, J6 which would be the Russian translations. Now the purpose of this is so that um, translated works in a particular language will be filed and presumably shelved together. Okay, sometimes we will have multiple editions of a book that are published in the same year, and this is true for the Joy Luck Club. We will apply um, CSMG 140, adding dates to call numbers. And that uh, instructs us that for later editions of the same work, we use the imprint date. If another edition is received with the same imprint date, use the work, what Elsie calls work letters, starting with B. And this is an actual example for the Joy Luck Club, PS 3570. Point A48 J6 1989 B. For another edition in the same year, we added the B because we already had a different edition by a different publisher that had the call number PS 3570.A48 J6 1989. Now we don't use A here because the work letter A is used for photocopies. But you can use B, C, D, E, etc. if you do have multiple editions published in the same year. Any questions on any of this? We do have one. The question is, is the translation table applied only to literary works or could it be applied to any translated work? It could be applied to any translated work. But um, there, are, there are guidelines in um, the classification and shelf listing manual. One is that you use the translation table in cases where you have um, a uniform title, which would mean that you know what the original title is. So in the case of the Joy Luck Club, we know what the original title in English was, so we're using that cutter and then adding additional digits to indicate a translation. There are cases, and actually I cataloged something fairly recently. It was a um, translation of poems of a Russian poet into English, and I don't have the original title. Uh, he's a contemporary writer, and I, the original title was not mentioned in the book, and I couldn't find it, you know, cataloged anywhere. So I, I could not use that table because I didn't have the cutter for the original work, so I just cuttered for the translated title. Um, you can use the actually you can use the translation title, uh, the translation table, in cases where you do not have instructions to the contrary. 
So uh, in the P schedule or any other schedule where you have a specific instruction to do thus and so for a translation, that's what you do before you go to the translation table. So the translation table is basically your last resort after you've applied uh, the instructions in your schedule-specific tables. I hope that answers the question. That seems to be it. Great. OK. What do we do when we have to create a new classification number for an individual author? This may happen if we don't find a number in the LC classification schedules. We search the LC catalog. We don't find anything. Uh, if the author has an LC NACO authority record, we may be able to find a classification number in field 053 of the authority record. But if there's nothing there, obviously we can't use it. If we find nothing searching OCLC WorldCat and nothing in our local library catalog, we'll have to start from scratch. OK. Now I'm giving an example of building a 20th century author number from scratch. And lo and behold, I'm using myself as an example because I know that LC has not established an author number for me. Um, this is an actual example in OCLC WorldCat. Up from Ribery is a play script that was copyrighted in 1971 as an unpublished dramatic composition. And it's represented by an OCLC member, K-level record in WorldCat, and it lacks a valid call number. I know that I should be classed in American literature, subclass PS, individual authors, and I'll be in the date range 1961 to 2000 because this work was copyrighted in 1971. So my surname begins with F, and the basic uh, classification number for authors with Surnames beginning with F in American literature, 1961 through 2000, is PS 3556.A through Z. And again, I will be instructed in the schedule that the author number is determined by the second letter of the name. So the second letter of the surname is R. So uh, the number should start out ps3556.r. Uh, looking at the cutter tables and following them, I would come up with ps3556.r37. So theoretically, that would be a, a good cutter for my name. But Looking in the schedules, I see that this number has already been used for another author, for Richard Freed. So I'll have to adjust the author number. I've checked the LC classification schedules, and I see that R37 is already used for an author whose name begins FRE. So I know. Franco will have to file uh, above that. It will have to be a lower number. So I look in the uh, LC catalog under call number and browsing around, I find two authors with my same surname. One is Betsy Franco, and her call number is PS3556.R3325. And right after her comes Marjorie Franco, PS3556.R3326. So I know that the author number for Elaine Franco should file between Betsy and Marjorie. OK, since E is closer to B than M, 
I want to be closer to Betsy's call number alphabetically. So this is what I chose, PS3556.R33253. Now, I've got my basic author number, which is getting pretty long, PS3556.R33253. I want to create a cutter number for title, because remember, I'm in, I would be applying table P through PC40, uh, second cutter um, for title. So the first word of my title is up, and that translates very nicely to U6. And I'll add my copyright date, and then the full classification number is PS3556.R33253, second cutter U6, 1971. Any questions on where we've gone so far? I have one question, and we're getting close to the end of yes. our time. Um, so this question is about the rationale behind the cutter being determined by the second letter of the name instead of the first letter of the name. OK, very good question. Uh, if you look um, under 19th century authors with one cutter, in, in American literature, uh, you'll see that the cutter is determined by the first letter of the surname. What happened was a publication explosion in the 20th century so that um, we just needed more numbers. <laughs> and uh, I guess it avoids the issue of having a basic number and then just a proliferation of, of cutters beginning with uh, the first letter of the surname. Uh, if, if you look in um, like Chinese uh, literature, sometimes they begin like by with the third letter of the surname because you'll You'll have Chu, Chung, Chen, etc. It's uh, it's a way of dealing with many, many surnames beginning with the same letter. I I don't know if I can explain that further. Um, I have a follow-up question, a related question. What if uh, two authors have exactly the same name? That's a very good question. Uh, I guess you'd. Uh, I'm not sure what LC would do. I guess what I would do is um, probably add another letter, like two or something, to the one who came after the first one. You know, if the first one was established according to a certain uh, classification and cutter, I'd probably add something on to the later, the person who is, appears in my catalog later. That is an excellent question. Uh, one more question, which maybe you're going to uh, address. Is there a resource that lists all the tables in one place? Uh, the, the P tables are, you can find them in a separate uh, volume uh, of the printed schedules. You also can find them on, if you have access to classification web, you can search by table. And uh, if you want to see uh, the P through PZ tables, you can find them that way. And the very last question, um, yes, the slides will be made available um, along with the recording uh, after the session. So you will all have access to uh, Elaine's very clear slides. Do you have some final uh, slides yes, to show? I, yes, I do. I'm right at my end now. This is the summary. Uh, this is how you, what you do in uh, 
establishing a number. First, of course, consult LC classification P schedule and the LC catalog to find a literary author number or range of numbers. Build one if needed. Apply the appropriate table or tables, preferring tables noted in the schedule. Then find or devise a literary work number and apply appropriate tables if you're uh, cataloging a specific literary work. Then um, this is just a list of some references. You can find a detailed outline of the LC schedules uh, on the LC uh, cataloging directorate site. You could probably find all the tables there too. Uh, I've alluded to the fundamentals of Library of Congress classification. That is a workshop. Uh, the manual is available for three, free download at that site, and there is a section on the P schedule. The Library of Congress online catalog, which certainly if you're cataloging, uh, you'd want to bookmark to uh, refer to that as needed. And then the uh, CSM classification and shelf listing manual. It's available for purchase from LC in print, and you do receive it as part of Catalogger's desktop. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. I'll take the uh, screen back just to wrap up. Well, thank you so much, Elaine, for um, helping us understand the special features of the LCP schedule. Um, these are the two remaining webinars for this season, both um, on RDA topics, uh, which may be of interest to some of you. We are currently planning the fall 2012 lineup of webinars, so be sure to check the elect website for registration information and announcements and other continuing education events. Attendees, you will all receive an online evaluation form from ELECTS. Please respond as we value your input. We especially welcome your suggestions for new webinars. And there is a form for submitting proposals on the website. Before we sign off, I would like to thank A. Ping Chen Gaffey for providing technical support for today's webinar. We appreciate your attendance today and we look forward to sharing other topics with you in the future. Have a good day.